provide an additional $2 billion in foreign military financing for Ukraine. And we put this together in a first-of-its-kind uh, defense enterprise fund. And it has three components. Uh, one is to provide weapons today, uh, so this will assist Ukraine in acquiring those weapons. Two is to focus as well on something that Dimitro just talked about, investing in Ukraine's defense industrial base, uh, helping to strengthen even more its capacity to produce what it needs for itself, but also uh, to produce for others. And finally, using this fund to help Ukraine purchase military equipment from other countries, not just the United States, uh, for Ukraine's use. Of course, everyone's eyes are focused on the situation in the East and the Northeast, and Kharkiv in particular. Um, and so the newest support that I just announced, but particularly the $60 billion supplemental, we know is coming at a critical time. U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken met with Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky in Kyiv on Tuesday, the first visit by a senior U.S. official since Congress passed a long-delayed $61 billion aid package for the country. Blinken acknowledged that the delay had made Ukraine more vulnerable to Russian attacks, but he pledged unwavering U.S. support going forward. We know this is a challenging time, but we also know that um, in the near term, the assistance is now on the way. Uh, some of it's already arrived, more of it will be arriving, and that's going to make a real difference against the ongoing Russian aggression uh, on the battlefield. U.S. military aid had been blocked by Republicans in Congress until they finally allowed a vote last month, when it passed with support from both parties. Big appreciation from Ukrainians to Americans for this. Zelensky said his country was thankful for the bipartisan support, but added that more help was needed as Russia mounts fresh attacks in eastern Ukraine. The first the decision of the package was crucial for us. It's very important to get it as quick as possible. And the second one uh, point is air defense, the biggest deficit for us. I think that the biggest problem, yes, and, uh, and uh, we need, really, we need today two patriots for Kharkiv for Kharkiv region because they are, the people are under attack, civilians and warriors, everybody there under Russian missiles. Blinken's visit comes days after Russia launched a ground incursion into the north of Kharkiv, opening a new front and stretching Ukraine's soldiers. During a speech, Blinken took aim at Russian President Vladimir Putin and said the U.S. intends to seize Russian assets. What Putin destroyed, Russia should and must pay to rebuild. Our Congress has given us the power to seize Russian assets in the United States. We intend to use it. Russia now controls about 18 percent of Ukraine and has been gaining ground since the failure of last year's counteroffensive to make serious inroads against Russian troops.
Я вам скажу, я сам на 64-ке перед цим рік воював, скажем так, то набагато краще. В плані том, що, ну, даже на мінних подривах, от лично сам своїм свого опыта, скажем так, підривався, то я навіть не відчував. Так як в радянського виробництва, наприклад, там контузії, такі, ну, різні бувають ситуації, навіть там друзі загинули при мінному підриві. От, а в цій техніки ні. У нас, до речі, не один екіпаж підривався, то плюс-мінус всі живі здорові. Ось попадання, це бронебійний, вон попадання. Ось. І три штуки сюди окремо дуб залетіли. Я хіда зараз покажу. Ось вихід. Один. Другий. Третій. Четвертий. А це яка вісень була? 1460. Мне кажется, уже надо ремонтировать. 